Hi! So today I wanted to talk a little bit about the five apps that have changed my life whilst doing my PhD and I've been using different apps for a while now, also during my master's thesis and during my bachelor's, but these five really stick with me so I think you could learn a lot if you also start using them. So let's get right into it. So the first app I wanted to talk about is Notion. And I'm always surprised when people say they don't know Notion yet, because I'm such a Notion nerd. So one thing I do with Notion is I structure my entire research with it. So always when I find a new paper, for example, or something that I discovered, there's this really nice add-on in Google Chrome and you can just click on a paper that you really like and then it automatically syncs to your Notion. And then for example, I structure it in to be read, read, or I already read it. And then by doing that, I kind of create my own research bank. And I also have to do a lot of programming. So when I find something I want to learn or some skill I need to do, sometimes I also put it in Notion. And something else I do a lot with Notion is reviews. So this is something I'm trying to incorporate now, but at the end of the day and at the beginning of the day, I try to do a four minute review where I kind of go over the most important tasks I have set that day or the most important thing I have to do. And by doing this, I kind of create my own diary of my four year research. And I sometimes go over it. So once a week or once a month, I go over all the little reviews I wrote for the different days. And sometimes something really pops up. So sometimes I see like, oh, I want to do this task. And I see that I had planned it for four days in a row. So then I know like, I really need to start doing this task and stop procrastinating on it. So for me, Notion is really an app that every student and every PhD student should be using because it's just so creative and you can really make it your own. So play around with it. And there are a lot of dedicated YouTubers that make videos about how to use Notion. So I'll put them down below. But if you're ever interested in my workflow, I wouldn't mind doing a video about it. So the next app I use a lot is Grammarly. And I think every student should be using Grammarly if you haven't heard about Grammarly. It's a really nice app that just corrects your work and you have the free version and the paid version and I personally still use the free version because I've used the paid version for a little bit but for me it didn't upgrade my work that much but it just corrects your spelling and looks at all the sentences you make and gives suggestions as to how to change them and I think if you have to write a lot of papers or if you have to write a really big thesis, even if you're a brilliant speller, we all make mistakes and Grammarly can really point those out. So that's another recommendation I would really give. The next one may seem really basic, but I'm sometimes really surprised by how little people use this. And that's Google Calendar. So Google Calendar I use as my holy calendar. So everything in my life that I may have to do or I could do, I put in there. And for me, I don't really use it as a strict schedule, but it's a more a suggestion. So a lot of times I put my time blocks in there. So for example, in the morning I put programming, in the afternoon I put research papers, and maybe in the evening I put film a YouTube video or see some friends, something like that. And that's more a suggestion of what I could be doing with my time. So I think this is really important to do when you're a PhD student. Otherwise, before you know it, you spend a entire day just doing random little things and time kind of slips by but doing this you can really get a nice overview of how you actually spend your time and also what you should be spending your time on and another important benefit is that as a PhD student we have to do a lot of things we have to give lectures we have to go to conferences we have meetings with our professor etc etc and usually all these things have a dedicated calendar that you can download and then just upload to your Google Calendar such that you don't have to think about it anymore. It's all set in there. So use any type of calendar, but I would recommend Google Calendar or I think Apple also has a calendar 
that's really good. And another app I found lately, which has been amazing, is this, it's not really an app, it's a website. It's called Connected Papers. And I'll just show you how it works real quick. So with Connected Papers, you can just type in any type of paper you have read recently, which you think is really good. And then you want to find other papers that are related to it. So it gives you this kind of graph overview of all the papers that have cited this paper or that have been cited in the paper. And I think this is amazing when you just start doing research on a certain topic and you really want to do a deep dive into that topic because it gives you a really good overview of what are the most important papers that you should be reading, but also these more smaller papers that give some interesting tiny details that you want to dive into a little bit more. And I'm now using this as my starting point. And then when I go a bit further, I just use my own research techniques. And the last one I want to talk about is also pretty basic in a sense, but it's to use Twitter. And maybe you're thinking like, oh, I already use Twitter. I don't need this. But how I use Twitter is actually pretty different. I made a separate account just for my academic work. And the only people I follow on that Twitter account are academic people or, for example, writers or business people that I think I can use in my work. And my Twitter, because I do this, my Twitter has kind of become my daily newsfeed of relevant literature that has come out in the last couple of weeks. Because it's so difficult to keep up with literature by yourself if you're not following the right people. So these are five apps that I've been using now and I think there are many more that could be recommended. So if you have any tips for me, I would love to hear them. Put them down below in the comments and see you next time. Bye!